Hello everyone, welcome to a foreigner farming in the Philippines. Wisconsin, can you turn the light? It's getting close to being late, but I wanted to do a update video on the piggery. I haven't done for one for several days. And I wanted to just check around down in here for myself. Because it's been two days since I've been down here. These little guys here are looking okay. These here are looking a little bit better than okay. They're looking great. Hey! What are you not heads up to, huh? This bunch here is doing well. And Mitch's pigs. Now, well, as you can see, they're looking much better. Um, still looking a little thin. And this is the sow here that was down. Um, can't even hardly recognize her. She looks so much better. Uh, it's amazing what two weeks worth of food will do. Uh, look at that sow there. It's got some kind of a wound on her neck. I'm going to have to treat that. A little blue spray after that. And this sow here looks just fine. All these other ones are looking good. Now, it seems like uh, the old caretaker, the caretaker that was there, didn't mention anything. Um, Tatai swears up and down that that sow on the other side there is pregnant. And she's in behind the skinny sow. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, Tatai might be right. This was the only one of the full-grown sows that didn't look like she was starving to death, so maybe the caretaker had had her bread and was actually feeding her. Yeah, you got a bad sore on your neck there. That definitely needs some blue spray on it. So I don't know what we're going to do with this sow um, if she is in fact pregnant. Wowie was here this morning as well, and he thinks that she's pregnant. <coughs> so, it just goes against my, well, it just, it just goes against what I believe to butcher a pregnant sow. I, I just won't do it. So, I don't know. It's looking like we've only got four pigs for sale then. Uh, these guys, I talked to Mitch about it a couple days ago. <laughs> Since we're having a hard time selling these pigs, um, Mitch has suggested that we just uh, butcher them and donate them uh, like we did some of our pigs when we couldn't sell them. That was two days ago. I asked him to give me a week to try to find him a buyer. Of course, Mitch is like everyone else. He needs he needs money. Um, I I don't know what to do with that pregnant sow now. I don't want I don't want her butchered, so uh, I may take her as well. So, but that means we've only got four. Uh, let's see, I think they're all sows, all little gilts. That might be a little Schultz right there. I'm not, I don't know. He won't turn around for me. Uh, now that he did turn around, I wouldn't pay any attention. Yeah, it's a little Schultz. That was a boar. Uh, it's a male. Let's put it that way. So there's one male and three females of the of the smaller lechon sized pigs, and then those the. 
the four larger sows who are just loving their new life here. They've got a pool to uh, wallow around in. They're, they're digging life. So I've got five days to find a buyer for those for Mitch and then uh, we might just give them away, I guess. I don't, I don't, know, what to, I don't know what to tell them. These guys here are looking good. I, uh, I'm not going to sell any more of these for 90 a kilo. Um, I'm just going to hang on to them. We've got about another month here where uh, we could have budget to feed them. And 90 per kilo is just losing money. So we'll give it a month and, and hopefully things will turn around a bit. I'd love to go down and talk to somebody. I was talking to Wowie today and uh, his boss, the, the Uno distributor, uh, took some pigs and just put them on a boat and sent them uh, to Lausanne. And uh, after everything was said and done, uh, one of them died on the way because there was no tender that went with them. So there's nobody to watch them because any nobody can go. You'd have to stay there. Uh, you'd have to be quarantined for two weeks. So when the boat arrived, the, the pigs would go one way and you'd go the other. And your way would be in the quarantine. <coughs> so anyway, <coughs> one of those pigs died. <coughs> that he'd sent on the boat <coughs> and so and he, and he sent 50 so one of those pigs died and after shipping and everything that was after everything was said and done he broke even so um, because he wasn't getting a great price in Luzon now I had a subscriber uh, saying that they got 200 pesos per kilo somewhere in Mindanao uh, yeah, I'd like to know where. Um, he gave me his address. Uh, I don't know if that's the... Because they have had a big... They have culled a lot of pigs in Mindanao. Um, so maybe the price is that high there. It's definitely not that high here. But having said that, Wowie said that the way to go would be... Because I was talking to him about what the government could do to intervene. Uh, the government in the Philippines could do to intervene to help out... Uh, small and medium-sized pork producers such as myself uh, Wowie said you just need to get a butcher them here slaughter them here put them on a ref refrigerated van put the van on the ferry and take them to whatever market that you were going to sell them in uh, I don't know what the price of pork is going for in a store in Mindanao uh, maybe somebody in Davao who's watching this, they could leave a comment and tell me what the price of pork is in a store. Or if they've heard what live weight pork is going for. Uh, there might be a way I could make that happen. At some point. Uh, we really don't have anything that's market we don't we don't have anything that's market weight right now. And if we kept these, it would be two and a half months until they were, possibly three. I mean, these aren't the large white breed. They're not. They're not technically solely uh, meat pigs. These are kind of a. These are kind of a, a mixed batch. They're kind of like the Kabir. Kabir are neither layers nor meat chickens. Um, they get larger and grow faster than a layer but they don't grow quite as fast as a broiler and that's kind of what these pigs are they don't grow quite as fast as a large white but they're, they're better than a native so uh, that's what we're that's where we're at there probably 155 to 170 days to get these pigs to market weight Whereas a large white would be 140 or so, 145, somewhere in there. 
Right, doggy? Okay. What? So, um, it's, it might be it might be worth it to me to take a little trip. Uh, I don't know. I might. We'll get that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I want to go around the piggery here real quick, like because I haven't been down here today. Seems like I'm just not having enough hours in the day anymore to uh, focus on anything anymore, really. But I do want to check these pigs in here. See what's going on. What you doing, buddy? How's your crew doing, Mama? Huh? Still has her seven. Still has an attitude. Yeah, you do. Uh, I don't think you need any more rice holes, son. I think you just need this pen cleaned out some. The pen just needs some rice holes taken out of it. She's so high up in the air. See, this pan does need a sack of rice holes in it. Because there's a cave back there in the back. And this pan needs about five bags in it. Well, it looks like we're next week we're going to be going to get rice holes again. What are you not heads doing, huh? See, these are some of the piglets that should be moved into the fattening pens, but we've got five of Mitch's pigs in the fattening pens. Uh, and can, can't get them moved. Still haven't gotten this feeder fixed. You're just an odd head, that's what it is with you. She keeps pushing all hers down to one end. Same thing this one's doing. I'm only counting six piglets in there. So something's happened to another one. She had eight, stepped on one the first day. And it's looking like she's stepped on another one because I'm only counting six. Yep. Stop it. Yeah, so it's going to be a rice hole Monday. All right, Petunia. There you go. Well, everybody else is looking okay, except for the rice hole situation. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.